What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Data Dash and today is May 12th of 2020. Well folks, I hope you are having a fantastic day and I hope you had a wonderful day yesterday during the having event that happens every four years. It was a very special time and I think for many of us it was our first having event. But I want to spend some time to discuss a little bit about price action in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency assets post having and talk about some key price levels I'm watching. Along with that as well, I want to spend some time to go through traditional commodity markets and talk about the current gold and silver ratios to the S&P 500 and why it's signaling that we might be setting up for the next big move here in commodities in the next coming weeks. All right, so we've got a lot of things to discuss, but I do want to share with you all that CoinMarketCap is actually doing a swag giveaway. So if you guys want some free CoinMarketCap attire, feel free to enter down the form down below in the description and enter in for a chance to win some free gear from CoinMarketCap, all right? So let's go ahead, without further ado, we'll take a look here across the board of the market. Take a look over the last 24 hours, the vast majority of the cryptocurrency market is up in the green right now with very few players in the red. Right now we have got Unibright leading the way here up 26.6%, Data Token leading close behind up nearly 16%, and another one of our top 10 plays, or two of them, I might say, here, which is Ren and Engine Coin, up merely both in this case 10 and 8% respectively. So, seeing a good bounce in all coins here again, reassuring us in this case, the more days we see on these kind of rebounds that are placed here at the top, and generally speaking, you know, we can take a look at our portfolios in this case. We've been holding up quite nicely compared to most all coins in this market, even though Bitcoin had gained a lot of dominance here over the past few weeks. Now, Diving straight into it, I want to talk about a very big level that I'm watching right now, and I think it holds a lot of significance for a couple of reasons, and that is $8,500 on Bitcoin. Now, yesterday during the halving event, again, I, I think many people have the misconception of expecting, you know, that this is going to be a major event where Bitcoin moves up $1,000, moves down $1,000. You know, there is a possibility that it can do that. And we talked about yesterday how there can be some craziness and price action following these very volatile events. And we did get that. I mean, if you're watching the one minute chart, if you're with us on the live stream, it was no doubt exciting. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we didn't get anything that was too far off and surprising. And if we take a look here at the hourly, you know, we can get a better picture of that. We had some very kind of volatile swings here, right, between, uh, you know, the low $8,000 range up to $9,000. And you saw these big kind of influxes here on the five minute chart where we were going up a matter of you know percentage to possibly two percentage points. So again, you have a lot of people trading off the volatility and enjoying that volatility. That's what traders thrive off of. But in the grand scheme of things, I want to talk on a little bit more of a longer time frame and mention a key price level that was signified yesterday, which was 8,500. You can generally tell, even though we do have some dips down below here, that roughly speaking, 8,500 was kind of the big even level that a lot of people are watching at here. And it's not only significant in the sense of where support was back here before we had the continuation from 8,500 to $10,000, very big even level, but also all the way back here for the sell-off here in late February going into early March. When this was breached, when the support was broken, this really kicked off one of the worst sell-off days back not only for Bitcoin, but also for Ethereum. So again, very important level here if you take a look at price levels. You can see it here on the daily as well. And uh, again, you could probably extend it back and include this as support, but I don't want to stretch it too much. I think, again, the real significance comes from here in the sense that once we broke this, we had the major sell-off that we had. But then again, there was not only a liquidity crisis, there was also the plus token Ponzi scheme selling off. There was, uh, well, still this problem is prevalent, which is a lot of people using leverage trading platforms, trading off derivatives. You guys will never see a referral link to a platform like that that's telling you to go trade 50 to 100x margin. I emphasized that yesterday in the live stream. It's not only one of the biggest issues in this space, but to me, it'd feel like putting a casino in my description. <laughs> Okay, I, I know some other people will put it out there and heck, you know, they bring up a good point. Some people like to gamble. I will never push that towards you guys personally. It's just, it's where I draw the line in that case about, you know, of course, you know, there, you have to make money as a content creator, but I don't push that stuff. You don't need 50x leverage in a market where in five minutes, like yesterday, we were moving up or down 2%. <laughs> so... Anyways, I hope that hope that tells you guys a little bit about my character and where, where I, I like to direct things. But that all being said, you know, taking a look at the data science model, 
the ironic thing about yesterday, as much as people had wild expectations, some people were extremely bearish. They thought, uh, for example, that Bitcoin was going to go to three thousand dollars. That uh, Bitcoin was also possibly going to go to twenty thousand dollars after the halving event. That there was just going to be some major squeeze. In reality, what really happened is, you know, through all of this crazy sell-off and uptrend that we'd had recently, we kind of came back down to fair value. Uh, d ignore the color here because the colors, uh, sadly, the, the data site spot is a little bit off. We didn't start the halving here, but it basically talks about days until the next halving event. So this roughly means in this case, we started our new, uh, we had the halving event yesterday. And basically here on the 11th, we should be starting off at the orange. But roughly speaking, we're close to the fundamental line here in the stock to flow. And interestingly enough, if we take a look back here at 2016, it's about the same exact thing here. Right, just a couple hundred dollars. Or excuse me. In this case, just a few, you know, dozen dollars away from where it should have been. But all in all, this makes complete sense. Why we're at where we're at, and the one thing that I always emphasize: a lot of people are like Nick. You know, we were at 14k back here, right? We were at such a good price level. You know, you know. In this case, it's not going to show the full extent to it because it's the close price, but. We had gone up to 14,000, you know, what do you have to say about that? It's like, well, yeah, that was a premature rally. And it was caused by a major short squeeze in the market because of that excessive leverage trading. There was a massive squeeze on shorts who were betting against Bitcoin's price during the peak of a bear market, or the bottom of a bear market, I should say. So we are riding exactly where we should be. The chart is going to look a little bit funky for now because of this premature rally that we didn't have this time around back in 2016. In 2015. So important to take that into mind. Now, I know you guys are probably tired of hearing about the having the stock to flow model. I'm a bit tired of it too. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I want to explore some different avenues. And if you guys agree with me, I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below and, and tell me what you guys want me to talk about and dive into because I've got a lot of things we're going to be discussing here over the next coming weeks. We're going to start diving in to DeFi. We're going to start diving into a lot of the developments with ETH 2.0, a lot of the really interesting applications, not only for DeFi, but enterprise, blockchain, for cryptocurrencies. But all in all, that's a good summary, I think, a good close here on the halving event. We've got another one coming in 2024. So until then, we've got a lot of other things to talk about. I, today, though, however, I want to talk a little bit about traditional markets as we dive into commodities and talk about you know the side effects of excessive central bank monetary policy. And that is not only going to have a ramification on equities, particularly specific growth-based equities, but also onto commodities. So this is an interesting chart here from Isabel Net that shows the Russell 1000 growth, which is an index in this case of growth stocks, versus the Russell 1000, which is value-based stocks. So people, again, uh, much more fundamentally strong companies versus, in this case, growth stocks, which are usually you know high revenue, low net income, if not losing money, and they're focused on user acquisition. And interestingly enough, you take a look here between these two indices, we're almost right back to where we were back during the dot-com bubble. You know, one of the problems I think that people have when trying to compare the current existing bubble that we're in versus previous market times is that they usually compare it to pre-2008 and then eventually how we're going to have the same side effects of 2008. But in reality, that was more of a housing bubble and a housing crisis. In reality, what we have now is much more of a similarity to the dot-com era where there's rampant speculation and equities and excessive stimulus that's pushing this kind of growth stock raise in valuations. And I would say the other common you know, time period that probably even shows just how significant of a time that we're living through is the 1920s. Again, very big differences here compared to the 20s. We have had a global virus pandemic in this case that has brought down markets. It's been kind of the domino that sparked a lot of the uh, problems that have been brewing under the surface for a long time and called for excessive central bank monetary policy. But you can see that this has much more to do with the complete divergence off of fundamentals. We've broken away. The lower that this number goes, the more we get towards actual fundamental valuations. And you can see just how wide this ratio can go in the sense of difference in growth. Back here in 2006, sitting around 0.68 in the ratio. Now we're sitting at 1.645. It's a big difference. It's a big, big difference. Along with that as well, talking about you know the Fed being the direct reason for this, central bank monetary policy. Take a look here at this chart 
that compares gold's price versus money supply M2. Okay, so it's a variation, uh, a variational measure of a certain uh, degree of how much money is in the system. And you can see here, M2 is one of the major measurements that the Fed uses. We can see here that gold's price, as we've continued to rise up here, started to go into positive territory. We've also seen a near direct correlation with the change in monetary supply. We can see as we started to get the change in money supply, it kick-started the rally here for gold. Gold followed here and has continued higher as we got through the liquidity crisis and started to continue pressing more dollars into the system. Gold adjusts to it. And this is something I want to talk about because, you know, I've, I've made the argument, guys, that I think Bitcoin and uh, other cryptocurrencies alike could possibly serve as hedges during this time. And I have no doubt they're, they're my favorite performing market. That's where I'm most allocated. But I want to talk about a little bit more of a scalable market here that's much larger, which is gold, and talk about not only the clear breakout that we've had. We're obviously in a bull market right now for commodities, especially precious metals, uh, more specifically. Commodities in general, I would take that back. But for specifically for precious metals, there is an obvious environment for precious metals to thrive. And they've already been showing that through price. But one key thing that I want to talk about is how I believe the current price action that we've seen, you know, if we take this to the six month where each of these candles is six months, you can see this has already been pretty good, pretty lucrative, you know, 10%, 7.6%, 12.11%. I mean, if you're comparing this to an average return, you know, on the S&P 500, you know, if you're taking this on an annualized basis, right? If we do this on a 12 month basis, you know, you're having 12% returns, 18% returns. This is great for an annual basis. And it shows we're in a bull market here, right? It's not kind of cryptocurrency returns, but it is really good for uh, precious metal markets or any other kind of developed multi-trillion dollar market. But I think we're just seeing the cusp, of it, just the beginning of what's about to come. And the reason I say that is because I look at ratios. So as you guys probably remember, some of you who watch the channel frequently, and if you're new to the channel, definitely consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon if you like what you see. Uh, we talk a lot about ratios, and ratios are a great way to see where the value change is coming right now, where we're starting to see inflows and outflows. And basically speaking, ratios are quite simple, uh, similar to how you could do a ratio, for example, or maybe a fraction of something uh, where there's a certain amount of value comparative to another value. In this case, we're doing it basically two dollar denominated assets, gold to the S&P 500. So the S&P 500, the SPX, one of the broader indexes for uh, stocks in the United States, and also gold, a commodity in this case that's being traded in terms of dollars. So basically gold and, uh, and denominated in an ounce in dollar terms. So we can see here that we get this really interesting chart where this almost a ratio here, right, where sometimes in a lot of lower areas, and we can even just take it here to the standard chart, we can see in the bottoming areas, you know, down here, this is usually where gold is generally cheap to the S&P 500, and this is where it's exacerbated. It's been through the peak of its rally. And if you take a look back at gold's chart, where we had our peak back here in August of 2011, that's also where the ratio peaked out. So when this goes higher, gold is beating out the S&P 500 by a certain degree. And what's interesting is you can see back here before we really kicked off the rally back here into 2003 to 2005, we had a very long-term technical pattern that built up before we had the breakout. This was a wedge. A wedge can go both ways, but in this case, we had a breakout going into a period of time with excessive central bank monetary policy. And we can see here as well that we had a very similar pattern, but even a more bullish pattern, an ascending triangle where you have a flat top of resistance, higher lows, and then in this case, a breakout. So we've already kickstarted this. We've already signaled that markets in regards to gold want to go higher and they want to outweigh and beat out equity markets, right? And it makes sense in this case. You've got, you know, again, people looking for a hedge now. Now there has been a bit of a pullback here, but we also saw that back here. We went from 0.54 to 0.4. I think in this case, what you're gonna see is a pullback to this line of previous resistance. You're gonna see it made a support and in the next coming weeks to the next three months, we could start to see a bottom formulate here and a rebound come in on prices. And I think the same thing is happening for silver. Take a look at silver right here. So we can see back here, we had a consistency in the line of support until we broke away from it and started to signal against silver to the S&P 500 that we were ready for higher levels. 
And boy, did silver really rally. I mean, take a look at the ratio down here, guys. 0 0.04 all the way up to 0 0.03. Huge difference. Major growth here. You can see just how much it outpaced. And a great way you can do this is take the date and price range, um, date and percentage range change. You can see here that it outgrew equities nearly 11x. And that's, that's incredible. Of course, no one's going to ever pick the bottom, so I would be much more safe and cautious and just say that, you know, some people probably got a 5 to 8x in this case comparative to the S&P 500. But it shows you in this case. It doesn't mean that silver per se moved up 10x. It moved up 10x compared to equities, right? So it's about allocating what market you want to be in. And the reason I think it's fair to look at it in this ratio and take those returns in mind is because some people who would just, by standard, have their money in a retirement account holding equities, they're losing out, right? And in this case, you could be in an asset that's net yielding you, and you could see the difference between what you would have lost versus what you would have gained in comparing those together. And we can see the same exact trend here, higher lows here, higher highs for the most part. This is exactly what we saw last time. And silver is repeating history. So again, I love these ratios, guys. I really think you should consider using them. Uh, in regards to Bitcoin, I had some people ask me about you know using ratios for crypto. Crypto is just a little bit early on. Uh, the volatility that you get and the returns you get in Bitcoin's market, as well as other cryptos, they, there's really not much correlation with traditional equities, uh, it, whether it be you know uh, you know uh, uh, contracting or you know correlating in this case. There's not much similarities because it's such a small market. But I would say in this case, ratios are very valuable for much larger scale markets. But all in all here, guys, you know, again, my feet, my thesis right now is I'm still very optimistic on crypto. One thing I forgot to talk about a little bit earlier, and I just want to spend some time to dive in through now because some of you might want me to. Uh, I want to talk about altcoins. Altcoins, as I kind of mentioned at the beginning of the video, picking up steam here, rebounding back up from the lows that they had back the other day. Base contention token as well, getting back up to its resistance line, bouncing off there this morning. We can see as well Chainlink recovering a good amount here from its downward movement. We can see as well Ethereum still holding relatively well here in the wedge, setting up for the breakout hopefully sometime here in the summer. Again, Bitcoin dominance starting to go down here with altcoin dominance starting to gain it back upwards. Again, this is why I don't panic, guys. Even though it did break through our wedge here, I didn't panic sell, right? Held through, focusing on the longer term trend. And I think that we've got a lot of opportunity coming up here in the next coming months for this to start moving. We started the trend reversal here, in my opinion. So again, for altcoins, keep it optimistic here. Bitcoin, I'm optimistic on. Gold to silver, I'm optimistic. And also, I wouldn't bet against equities, but I don't feel they're going to move up as much as many hedging assets will. Equities are already at balloon valuation. It's going to take trillions upon trillions of dollars of liquidity and maybe even the Fed directly buying equities in order for equities to start moving significantly higher at these valuations. The Fed, the ECB, the People's Bank of China, the Bank of Japan, all the central banks of the world have built a mess, and it just seems like they can't print enough to keep it going as much as they'd like. All right, hope you all are having a great day wherever you are, and I'll see you all in the next video. Stay tuned.